Hey, what's up guys? Welcome back to another Tools Day video. My name is Kyle, and for today's video, we've got a, a tool that could make your framing site a lot more efficient, so let's get into it. Hey guys, what's up? So today we're gonna to be talking about a new Makita circular saw. Now this isn't just any circular saw. This has a lot of different features that you're not gonna find on your everyday circular saw. First thing that you're gonna notice is the size of the blade. This is the new Makita XS H10Z. That's the model number if you wanna search it up. Or you can just search nine and a quarter Makita Cirque saw because this is a nine and a quarter blade on this cordless saw. So I know if you guys are into tools and you pay attention, Skill Saw has uh, released, I think at the uh, World of Concrete show, they showcased their new 10 inch Cirque saw, but that's not out yet but this is currently the biggest cordless circular saw. Now that in its own is great if you, you wanna cut big timber. So they're claiming this has a three and three eighths cross cut capability at zero degrees. Now, right away, my mind says, wait, three and three eighths? Why would you not try to just squeeze out that extra eighth of an inch to get a four by four in one pass. I don't know, I have not tried it yet. I don't know if they're saying on the track it's three and three eighths because yes, this is not only a Cirque saw that you can use to cut uh, just regular two by dimensional lumber like a normal Cirque saw would, or it is track capable. So the base plate comes with the capability of getting put on a track. So right away, we've got two unique features that nobody else is doing, which yeah, a lot of times you don't need the capacity of a nine and a quarter inch blade when you're framing, and you don't need to be able to put your framing saw on a track. However, that has come in very handy for me personally as of late. If you guys are paying attention to the current build series, the cabin in the woods, we've been doing a lot of sheathing because that roof is standing seam, and I've been using the heck out of this saw to mass cut a lot of sheathing and I'm able to get through four sheets of three quarter plywood with this saw, no problem. And it has the power to do it. So what Makita is doing is their standard 36 volt system. So instead of having a new battery platform like some of the other brands, they stuck with their 18 volt batteries and just, you gotta put two of them in there. So you got your two slots. Surprising enough, you look at this saw and you're expecting it to be very heavy. Well. I think it's probably lighter weight than a lot of the rear handle seven and a quarter saws that are cordless on the market right now. It definitely feels a lot lighter, even with two batteries in, uh, I think it's still pretty lightweight. So Makita definitely did a lot with the components that they're using. It's not very heavy, although it still feels good and durable. So that's, that's a plus. Now let's go ahead and talk about some of the other features. So this thing is capable of negative one degree, which I was trying to wrap my head around why I would need to go negative degrees. I don't know, maybe you guys could drop it in the comments. I, I just couldn't think of an application that I do personally where I needed to go negative degrees. I would just go one degree the other way. I mean, maybe a slight bevel in cabinet making or something, but also it's capable of a 60 degree bevel on this Cirque saw, which I don't think I, don't think I have any other saws that are capable of that. And with that nine and a quarter blade, you're still able to cross cut a two by at 60 degrees. So I just think that this saw is gonna be a great all around saw for framing and trim carpentry with the track saw, kind of across every scenario that I'm potentially gonna see in my day to day job. I think this is gonna be capable of doing it. Now there are some other saws out on the market. Bosch has released one. I don't know if it's actually you can purchase it yet, I don't know, but it has the base plate with the track saw capability. And then you've got the HKC Fest tool, which I have, which you can take off the track, use it as a regular saw or use it as a track saw. But honestly, I would never take that saw off of the track to use as a framing saw because it just doesn't have the power or the capacity compared to you know just a regular framing saw. This, however, is gonna be able to do just about anything that I would need to do. 
Now you might be wondering how, how long is this gonna last with just a couple five amp hour Makita batteries? They're claiming, and I can't, I can't confirm this because I don't frame in oak, but they're saying 110 cuts through three by 12 oak. Now I do have a large piece of oak. We're gonna see how it performs cutting it. Other than that, I think some of the cool features that I've seen on this, let me just go ahead and set this on the track. Oh, that might be kind of hard to do, right? Nope, it's also a plunge cut saw. So you can set it up as a plunge cut saw. So it's not just a regular saw, but you can actually use it for plunge cutting. I mean, this thing has really almost everything available. So you can set it up on your track, get it to your location, plunge cut it, it's all good. Uh, we've got some track locks here that are going to lock it into the track. That way, if you go to an extreme bevel, it's not going to fall off the track. I'll show you that in a little bit. Let's see, some of the other things that I can show you here while I've got this up, this is how you are going to create that negative degree bevel. There's two little uh, tabs here. You're going to push those in. Oh yeah, I gotta, I gotta loosen it. And if I push these tabs in, it drops the saw back that one degree, or when you lift it up, you'll hear the click. Now you're back to zero. So while we're looking at the bevel functions, one thing else you'll notice here, we've got a bevel stop um, gauge and we can stop it at 60 degrees, 45 degrees, or your 22 and a half degree. What that means is if I've got it on the 22 and a half and I go to try to bevel it, it's gonna stop at 22 and a half. So we can go all the way to 60 degrees, you just gotta make sure that the, uh, the saw guard is out of your way. Look at that. Actually, it looks like it probably goes more like 61 degrees. I don't know about you, but that just kind of, that's, that's kind of intimidating for me even to see my saw like this, but I can plunge cut down and we'll do a demo. We'll see how this thing works because I know that um, a lot of times when you're doing extreme angles and you're just using a regular Cirque saw, man, if you are just off a little bit, the saw can bind. And I think that's why track saws are so appealing to me is I don't have to think about it. I don't have to be, you know, so careful. I can effortlessly set the track on my points that I want it to cut. And I'm just gonna go straight through. The saw is gonna be more efficient. It's gonna use less battery because it's not gonna ever bind if I'm going off a little bit. And you guys know when you're framing, looking at the line that you're trying to cut is sometimes hard at an extreme bevel. So anyway, we'll get into that. Uh, other than that, we've got, you know, this is a cool feature, I think. Let's go ahead and collapse this. I'll show you here. Right here by your handle, you got this little lever. So that's gonna get your saw guard out of the way. That way when you enter your cut, it can be a nice effortless uh, entrance. That's handy. We've got dust port back here which we can hook up to, you know, whatever dust extraction system that we want to. And here on the back of the saw, if you're looking in here, it'll give you your gauge as to what depth you're cutting at with a nice little red tick mark showing you what your depth is. So that's handy. Other than that, the only other thing that uh, I guess I'd point out is this came with one of these uh, rip fences and that's gonna just get you know put in like so. You got a couple knobs to tighten it up where you want. Personally, I, I don't understand. Maybe it's gonna be quicker, I don't know, but I don't think so. Putting your rip fence in, trying to get a tape measure because there's, there's, no, there's no dimensions, there's not a ruler on this saying that's how far away you are from your blade, so you're gonna have to get your tape measure and check it for square to make sure that it's not going one way or the other. I just think, good Lord, you have a track saw, put the saw on a track. I don't know, to me, seems like I'll, I'll never use this ever. But I wanted to mention that it does come with the saw. So other than that, I don't know that there's a whole lot other to talk about. It has a brake, brushless motor, um, battery indicator. Oh, it does have their auto start wireless system. I, once again, probably, I'm never gonna use it. You do need to put the chip in so it's ready for the auto wireless, which what that does is it's gonna talk to your dust extractor as long as you have it all set up and turn on automatically. That way you're not just running batteries or whatever in your dust extractor. It's only gonna turn on when you need it. So here we've got two batteries. 
We're gonna pop these in and we're gonna go ahead and make some cuts. All right, so the first test we're gonna do, we're gonna just go ahead and do some simple cross cut cuts. Like you're gonna use this as a, just an everyday circ saw, not a track saw. We've got two by material. I've got this oak palette, which you guys have seen if you've seen some of my other tool testing videos. It is three inches exactly. And then we're gonna go ahead, even though it doesn't claim it can cut a four by four, we've got this uh, Doug for a four by four scrap. We're gonna go ahead and try to cut that as well without a track. So one thing that you'll notice is this is the blade right saw. I'm not a huge fan of blade right just because visibility for me, I lean over my saw. A lot of saws don't have great visibility when you're looking down from the left side of the blade, but it is what it is. Uh, I can see just fine. And I got my safety glasses if something comes up. So we're gonna go ahead and kick on some dust extraction so I don't get dust blowing all over in my uh, shop. There we go. And let's go ahead and make a cut. You'll notice that I can go ahead and use that little lever to get the guard out of my way. That's a nice feature. No problem. Let's get that out of the way. Let's cut through this three inch piece of oak. Not an issue, plenty of power. And let's see if we can get the capacity to cut through this piece of four by four. Let's see. Oh my gosh, I don't know if you can see this, but that is so close to getting done. This is so close to getting done. I got through most of it. Look at that. Why Makita? Why not just, I mean, I don't know. I feel like if you, if you just shaved off just the little bit of base plate or made it just go a little bit deeper, you could claim that you can cut through a four by four. That just makes sense to me. I don't know. I'm sure there's some reason. Anyway, those are simple cross cuts. Any saw should be able to do those. I think you've seen that the performance was great. It didn't matter if I was going through three and a half inches of material three inches of oak or just a regular two by. Now, what I love about this saw, because I'm never gonna pick it up to be my cross cut saw, is its capacity and track capabilities. I'll show you what I mean. Okay, so what we've got here is four sheets of three quarter plywood. And this is what I've really been using this saw for on site is, you know, when you've got a ton of repetitive cuts, anything you can do to be more efficient is gonna be better for you, especially as a business owner. But even if you're just a DIY person, you know, you wanna get back to work, not spend all your time just cutting your material. When you've got a ton of sheathing that you have to cut uh, all to the same dimension, why would you wanna to have to do one, two pieces at a time? I love the fact that with this saw, I can actually cross cut four pieces of three quarter and these are gonna be perfect cuts because I make my mark on one side, make my mark on the other, set my track there. So there you go, that is four sheets of three quarter plywood. And what's really good is if you have an entire stack and you keep five sheets lined up, it's gonna put the mark for the fifth sheet on the bottom because it gets even deeper uh, than just four sheets at once. So this is what we've been really using this for, but I'll show you another thing that I love about this saw and what I've also been using it for on site that you can't really do with a lot of other track saws out there. All right, so this application here that I've been using this saw for as well is cutting rafters. So I've only got a two by six. I didn't have any two by 12s, but it was really evident when I was cutting two by 12s this last week on the job site. Now let's say I'm doing a 412 pitch. 
at the top of my rafter, I might only be a nice short 412 pitch cut, but at the bottom, specifically, I was cutting some jack rafters on a layover roof up a valley. I had a long pitch cut like so, where I also had to cut a 412 bevel on the board. Now, if you've got a saw like this, I love this saw, I mean, it's great. Uh, it's, it's pretty heavy, but it's got lots of power. You gotta come in here and not only are you gonna have to make a long straight cut, which is totally doable, but you also are on a bevel. So now you don't have the visibility that you once had. And whenever cutting bevels, now a 412 bevel is not too, too extreme, but if you get into 45s and if your saw gets off just a little bit or you have to correct your cut because visibility is poor, it can bind the blade, it can make it a little bit cumbersome, and especially for those of you out there that are new to cutting, framing, uh, don't have a ton of experience, that can be a challenging cut. I've seen guys on site not do that great with it. However, with this saw, I mean, it's just, yeah, maybe it takes the skill out of it, but it's as easy as setting your track on your line. I mean, that's easy. Beveling your saw, which we'll go ahead and bevel it. We're just gonna go here about 18 and a half degrees. So I got my bevels here and making sure that that track is on our line. I'm just gonna be able to go in here. And people always ask, how does the track stay put? For the most part, it has a pretty sticky bottom. And so it stays really, really well put. But let's go ahead and... So there you go, guys. That is what I think is one of the biggest advantages of having this saw on my site because I love precision, I like efficiency, and other than having to set the track on the board, you could see how quick and precise it made the cut without any effort. That's gonna allow somebody without a whole lot of skill with a circ saw cutting on bevels to make a really good cut. So as long as you know what you're cutting, you can do it with pretty good accuracy and this is another thing as to why I want it to be perfect. So when I'm doing a, a rafter or especially like a layover jack rafter in this case, I want this to be seated on my roof perfectly because the more material that is touching, the more accurate it is, the better it's going to distribute the weight, fasten in, all those things. It's just a better way of doing it. Rough framing doesn't have to be rough. Uh, you can use a tool that makes your job easier and better. And I think that this is a great addition to a framing site if you guys do a lot of that sort of work and you just want precision and accuracy. I know I'm gonna get a ton of comments down below about you don't need a track saw, you don't need, yeah, that's fine, don't get a track saw, I don't care. But I love it, Greg loves it, it's helped out a ton on our job site, and I wanted to share it with you guys. So if you guys enjoyed this, or if you thought this was helpful or informational, uh, go ahead and drop me a comment down below. I'd love to hear what your guys' thoughts are. I think overall this saw has a lot of positives. I don't think it's very easy to use as a plunge saw compared to like my Festool HKC or even the plunge cut Makita saw that I have. Those all work better as that uh, in that case, but I think this is a great framing slash track saw. I wish more manufacturers would put track capable base plates on their saws. I just think that they're missing an opportunity. And I think as a framer, if your if you're Milwaukee rear handle had a track slot in it, first off, Milwaukee, where's your track saw at in general? We want one. But if, if this had a track in it, you bet guys would use it because it's gonna make you better. And that's the whole point. It's not about what you did for the last 20 years and it's worked just fine. It's about trying to find ways to minutely improve your, your job. And that over time becomes big changes. So anyway, I'm gonna get out of here. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Appreciate the support. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you haven't. If you don't want to, that's no big deal, but hopefully you come back and watch some of our future videos. So I'll catch you guys on the next one.